Nigerian Instagram influencer who posted pictures of his lavish lifestyle could spend the next 20 years in a prison cell. Dubai police have once again solved yet another case involving an international online scammer known as Raymond Abbas, but who goes by Hush Puppy on social media platforms. Hush Puppy, the exhibitionist. Born into a modest family in Lagos and endowed with great intellectual capacity, Hush Puppy used her talent to make easy money by becoming a scammer. He gradually made a reputation for his work in the field. A successful career pushed him to expatriate in order to gain access to high technology. He chose Malaysia, where he didn't last long. He then follows one of his colleagues to Dubai where he forgets the discreet life he used to lead, which cost him his freedom. Let's take a closer look at Hush Puppy's life to better understand how he works. Who is Hush Puppy? Why did he take the easy way out? And what could be the cause of his downfall? Born Ramon Olorunwa Abbas on October 11, 1982 in Lagos, Nigeria. He is the son of a cab driver and a bread seller. According to uncertain sources, he attended a public school, and then dropped out to follow his mother to the Olajoho market where he sold clothes between 2008 and 2009, in order to help his family support itself. In 2018, he married Shawana Nikesha Chapman. He has three children from relationships with different women. He began his profession as a scammer in the 2010s at the age of 28, a profession he would pursue for 10 years, ending in 2020 with his arrest by the FBI in collaboration with the police in Dubai, his country of residence. The real question is how this generous child from Lagos, who loved to share with his family and friends, became a major criminal. Towards the end of 2009 and the beginning of 2010, Hush Puppy continued with his clothing business. However, every evening after the market, he went to a cyber cafe to check his emails. It was during his visits to the cyber that Hush Puppy met a group of Yahoo boys, with whom he exchanged ideas on how to operate. He ends up taking an interest in this way of life and decides to give up trading. So it's taking the easy way out by operating like Yahoo Boy. Yahoo Boy is a term used in Nigeria to designate a fraudulent lover. The term Yahoo Boy became popular in Nigeria in the 2000s, and has spread rapidly to Ghana in recent years. In just a short time, this practice has become a way for young people to get rich quick. To operate like Yahoo Boys, many start with laptops equipped with the Windows operating system. Then migrate to Apple MacBooks, because of its better security features, reliable internet, and finally a VPN, virtual private network, that lets you mask your online identity by changing your real location and IP address. Yahoo Boy works like this. They sign up with their own Facebook accounts, pretending to be someone else or creating fictitious profiles for them, fill in the profiles with details of their choice, add attractive photos, most often of white men working in the military. As they communicate with their victims, they fall in love with the personalities they've created online. Most often, the Yahoo Boy is very smart and good at the art of conversing. In this way, he manages to win his victim's trust, making the conversation between them more personal, while getting his victim to fall in love with him. In the end, the victim, being in love, begins to comply with all his demands. This was the kind of work Hush Puppy did from 2010 to 2014, before following in the footsteps of his compatriots who were already in the same profession. He moved to Malaysia in 2014, to the city of Kuala Lumpur to be precise. Being in Malaysia with his colleagues, Hush Puppy will improve his knowledge of Yahoo Boy before creating a gang that he will train. With his gang, 
Hush Puppy no longer attacks private individuals, but specializes in BEC, business email compromise, a system that involves hacking into corporate accounts to gain access to their information, and easily modify it. This is how Hush Puppy went from Yahoo boy to cyber criminal. As a cyber criminal, Hush Puppy would hack into companies' account numbers and change them to his own. With this type of fraud, he was already making a lot of money, and was already bragging about his success on social networks, sometimes traveling back and forth from Nigeria to Malaysia to see family and friends. When asked where his money comes from, he says he made his fortune through his real estate companies in Malaysia. In 2017, he befriended Momofa, a famous Nigerian influencer living in Dubai. The latter's fast-paced lifestyle prompted Hush Puppy to join him in Dubai. Once in Dubai, Hush Puppy continued to show off his wealth, between private jets, luxury homes, luxury cars, clothes and luxury bags. Hush Puppy used his social networking platforms to gain notoriety and brag about the immense wealth he acquired by running scams involving compromised business emails, online bank heists and other cyber frauds that financially ruined tens of thousands of victims. All this wealth has made him a major Instagram influencer with 2.8 million followers. It was this fraudulent lifestyle that led to his downfall. Before we continue talking about his wealth, let's take a look at an example of fraud perpetrated by Hush Puppy. Let's take the case of the scam perpetrated on the Qatari businessman. Hush Puppy walked away with $1 million to launder. In 2019, a Qatari businessman wanting to build a school in the Gulf, will apply for a loan from Wells Fargo Bank in the USA. Hush Puppy, having received this information, sets out to swindle the investor. He contacted Abdul Rahman Imran Juma, a young Kenyan with whom he had worked. Juma led a rather discreet life away from social networking and bragging, which is why information about his life is fairly absent, if at all, on social media. In this case, he was to play the role of intermediary between Hush Puppy and the Qatari. Juma would have to pose as an employee of Wells Fargo Bank and contact the investor to ask him to pay $150,000, which represented pre-charged interest on the loan. From this agreement, Juma should have $100,000 for himself and the rest of the gang, and Hush Puppy, $50,000. The investor agrees to pay the money and makes the deposit into an account in Kenya. After Juma confirms the deposit, the investor requests a meeting with the manager of Wells Fargo Bank, as he feels his loan application is sound. At this point, Hush Puppy fears the worst, as the Qatari investor might notice his African accent. So he contacts Fawashi, one of his Nigerian colleagues who has lived in the United States for several years, and asks him to pose as Mr. Malik, director of Wells Fargo Bank, and call the investor. The aim of the call was to convince the Qatari to travel to the USA to set up a bank account to receive the money, as such a large sum could only be sent by bank transfer. The Qatari, overwhelmed by his business in Qatar, explained that he was unable to travel to the United States. So the Qatari offered to send him a power of attorney, which would enable him not only to set up an account in his name, but also to exercise control over it. At the end of the call, they agreed and the Qatari sent him a power of attorney. Hush Puppy then contacted Kelly Chibulo Vincent, a member of his team based in Nigeria, whose role in the gang was to create fictitious accounts for their operations. Chibulo Vincent created a bank account in the Qatari's name and an SMS platform called TextMe, which facilitated communication between the investor and Hush Puppy. Once set up, Hush Puppy provides the Qatari with his account number and certain documents, and asks him to pay $250,000 as the first installment to activate the account. The Qatari did not accept this proposal, as he found the amount too high. He contacts Juma to ask him to reduce the amount. Juma, surprised by the news, contacts Hush Puppy to ask for an explanation of what the investor has told him. Hush Puppy convinces Juma to believe him and asks him to approve his request to the investor. The Qatari finally gives in to Hush Puppy's request, and makes a second payment of $250,000. Vincent, for his part, contacts Hush Puppy to get his due after the work he's done, but Hush Puppy brushes him off. Hush Puppy's reaction to his accomplice is the beginning of the gang's downfall. 
Vincent, feeling frustrated, contacts the Qatari and asks him to make payments into a different account from now on. This attracts the attention of the Qatari, who shares this new information with Juma. Hushpuppy, informed of this situation, contacts one of his Nigerian-based police accomplices, Kyari, to give Vincent a good thrashing in order to shut him up. Still following his plan, Hushpuppy contacted Fashola to pose as an account manager. She was supposed to find accounts that could receive money that they would swindle from the businessmen. But Akabayanka, a bank employee and close friend, didn't know much about account management, so she contacted her to find out. Akabayanka gave him a briefing, stressing the need to limit withdrawal rates, but without specifying the maximum amount. She offers her personal account as an alternative so that transfers can be made into it. Fashola relays the information to Hushpuppy, who agrees with the proposal. He decides to launder the first payment of $400,000 by buying a Richard RM-013 watch for $230,000. Payment was made by bank transfer. Following this transfer into the watchmaker's bank account, Hushpuppy hacked into this account and used it for the next stages of the scam. Several withdrawals will be made from the Fashola and Akabayanka accounts, by bank transfer. The sum of $15 million is fictitiously registered in the account created for the investor. Hushpuppy contacts the investor again and asks him to deposit the sum of $330,000 into the account. This $330,000 is divided as follows. $100,000 and $230,000 in the watchmaker's account. He called some friends to offer them his watch for $150,000 and $100,000 was transferred back into his account by the Qatari. Hushpuppy also transferred $7,100 to Fashola's father's account in Nigeria. Thanks to the money collected in this scam, Hushpuppy will be able to buy an international passport, enabling him to travel to almost 100 countries without visas. In addition to this scam, the FBI had already discovered Hushpuppy's email address. Having scoured this address, they discovered other frauds. All was known, the FBI would issue an arrest warrant for Hushpuppy, he would finally be arrested in June 2020 in his apartment in Dubai by the FBI in collaboration with the Dubai police. Upon his arrest, his home was searched, and the following items were found. Cash worth almost $40 million, 21 luxury cars, 47 smartphones, and 21 computers, not to mention almost 2 million false identities. He was extradited to the United States. Upon arrival in the United States, he was taken into custody in a cell in Los Angeles, and then brought before Judge Otis Wright, who presented him with the charges against him. Attempted swindle of hundreds of millions of dollars from an English league club. Defrauding Qatari Investor Identity Theft Money Laundering Collaboration with North Korean regime to swindle $14.7 billion from Malta's Bank of Valletta in 2019. During his trial, Hushpuppy confesses and pleads guilty. He goes even further, expressing his regret at the bad life he led and asks for forgiveness in these words. Since I've been incarcerated, I've had enough time to think about the past, and I'm sorry I let greed ruin my family's good name and reputation. Hushpuppy took care to secure his assets in tax havens in the Caribbean islands such as St. Kitts and Nevis, former British colonies. At the end of the trial, Hushpuppy was sentenced to 11 years in prison and fined $1,732,841 to be paid to his victims. Although Hushpuppy is a crook in the eyes of the world, he remains a role model for his fellow Nigerians. It is in this context that Dr. Oyanuga says Hushpuppy's influence endures, as he is still considered as a role model. We're in a country where a lot of young people are suffering. They see another young person who was once just like them become just as great. He declares, I've seen parents who have taken their children to learn how to become Yahoo boys. Seya, a Nigerian cab driver who knew Hushpuppy as a child, says that everyone knows that Hushpuppy committed a crime, but it's understandable. Nobody prays to be poor, so when you see someone who is rich, you will pray to God to give you his kind of wealth. The Nigerian government, through Mrs. Abike Dabri Erwa, chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, declared that Hushpuppy's arrest for alleged fraud should not be used to judge Nigerians living abroad. She added that the case is damaging Nigeria, 
and pointed out that fraud does not represent the value of Nigerians who are dedicated and committed workers. Cybercrime is a scourge that is becoming more and more prevalent as the years go by. According to Interpol, Africa recorded a sustained rise in cyber attacks in 2020, including a 238% increase in those targeting online banking platforms. As internet use intensifies, cybercrime is becoming a strategic sector. So isn't it time for national and international bodies to tackle this phenomenon head-on and eradicate it completely? If you liked the video, please subscribe, like and share it, and don't forget to click on the notification bell, so you don't miss our next video. See you soon on Mazel Media, information at the heart of the world.